Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mirror Dungeon solo video. Today we'll be using the second of the three LCCB units in the form of Rodeon. As an identity, she doesn't really have anything special about her. The most she does is inflict paralysis when rolling heads and needing multiple blunt skills to even get average rolls. Luckily, as she only has blunt attacks, that's not that hard to accomplish. The thing that holds her back the most, however, is that she is one of the five frailest identities in the game with only 161 max HP at level 45 and a minus 4 defense level. She shares this with Seven Association Ryoshu and Liu Gregor, only being beat out by LCB Sinclair and Otis as the actual frailest identities with a total 153 max HP. If you know anything at all about soloing, you'll know that your health is the most valuable resource, so by having such a small amount, it inevitably makes it more difficult. These identities are balanced out by having a much higher than average offense level on all of their attacks, but ultimately this doesn't mean much because the frailty necessitates a reliance on ego use. For the first few floors though, we don't have to rely on them just yet, as the enemies are weak enough to not deal too much damage. Support passives don't really make a difference for LCCB Rodeon. Because she doesn't have any status effects to take advantage of, we take only the most basic things we can, and pick the unloving as our first floor. Our starting gifts are the Temporal Brittle and Today's Expression for bonus blunt damage. This floor is already pretty easy to begin with, and unlike LCCB Ishmael, our damage will never fall off. We can very easily take out all the enemies before the time limit runs out thanks to having exclusively blunt damage. They do manage to stagger us at one point because of our ultra frailty, but it doesn't make much of a difference. For our reward, we take the Grey Coat, Considering our main strategy will focus mostly on egos, it is a vital component that we need. The second floor we choose is the Automated Factory, where we pick up Blue Zippo Lighter to solve all of our ego resource problems, and receive Illusory Hunt as well as Carmilla from events. The boss this time around is the Pink Shoes, which is actually the easier of the two options. The reason being, since they do exclusively Lust damage, we can use Sanguine Desire to buff our Lust resistance, making our frailty no longer a real problem. It's worth mentioning that Base E Song's support passive is actually incredibly useful for using Egos like this, where the sanity cost takes place over time since he counteracts it completely. Continuing to clash and focus down the robot enemy, we eventually reach a point where his attacks become too powerful for our regular skills, and ultimately we have to start relying on egos a bit more. Not quite enough where we have to spam them every turn, but enough to where you can really see the low clash power of this identity. Once we manage to take them out, we choose Lowest Star as our reward and head into the third floor to be crushed. Most Ego Gifts don't benefit LCCB Rodeon at all, so finding ones that are actually useful is fairly difficult. After a full floor of nearly useless gifts, we find Bloody Gadget right before the boss, Talisman Doll. Just like with the Pink Shoes fight, we use Sanguine Desire to buff our Lust Resistance, this time, though, we overclock it to get a little healing from Grey Coat as we enter this fight without full health. <laughs> By this point, I was planning on making this Ego specifically the main strategy of the run. Even without Bleed and Rodeon's main kit, this Ego is more than enough to support it fully by itself. Even more so if you can actually find good ego gifts. <laughs> 
Ultimately though, our frailty and poor clash potential ends with us getting staggered and forced down to only 21 HP. This stagger is doubly bad, since it happens exactly when you need to attack the doll and apply the talisman to debuff it the next turn. But as we're staggered, we can't do that and have to deal with his scary attack at full power. Having no usable skills whatsoever, we have to rely entirely on our egos this turn. Luckily, Rodion is one of the characters who has access to four egos at a time, and as such, we are able to clash with all of the doll skills, preventing damage entirely this turn. This has the obvious side effect of forcing corrosion and corroding into debatably one of the coolest looking corrosions in the game. We finish him off with pursuance. All of our rewards are useless, so we take the only level 2 gift, Pain of Stifled Rage, and head into the 4th floor, Vain Pride. One good thing about getting nothing but useless Ego Gifts means that you have a ton of fusion fodder, and using that fodder we manage to pick up the Red Stained Gossipium before the fight with the robots. Now with this one Ego Gift, as well as the Rusted Muzzle we picked up somewhere I don't remember, we have more than enough bleed support for the rest of the run. Still though, our frailty is more than a little bit of an issue, and we have to be very careful in order to not get staggered. Most of the first few turns of this fight is simply trying to stay alive while slowly building up the bleed stack. Once we had all of our skill slots, it became easy to defeat the small robots to trigger the skill check, as they are weak to blunt damage. I accidentally did a little bit too much to the big robot and had to whittle him down all the way again. But Sanguine Desire proves its worth yet again by showing how optional bleed count truly is. The rest after is incredibly simple as the robots can't handle the amount of bleed we've inflicted. Our reward is Oracle, to ensure we never run out of resources, and for the final floor we enter Sunk Gloom. At the shop we take a Grimy Iron Steak and Little and To Be Naughty Plushy. The final boss is quite literally the easiest one to solo as long as you have a single corrodible ego. The Blubbering Toad quite literally defeats himself, as his main gimmick of lowering sanity is only a threat when you're in a team, or he isn't the final encounter. Since neither of those things are the case, we can freely spam Ego to our heart's content without fear of any negative repercussions. Unfortunately, all of our setup for Bleed is ultimately redundant here, as he doesn't have enough skill slots for it to actually make an impact. <laughs>
가능하면 다치시지 않게 싸우셨으면 좋겠어요. 치킨으로 말하자면 총 달개서 닭다리 하나가 뜯어내진 꼴이랄까요? 볼품 없어졌다는 뜻이죠? 승객이 딱콩 한방 먹었어 좋았습니다. 제가 만약 도시에서 야구 선수가 되어 홈런을 날렸더라면 이런 기분이지 않았을 것 같은데. 날카롭게 갈아서 한국한 캡틴. 방금 직원이 큰 성과를 냈습니다. 임무 목표 완전 해결. 이제 복귀할게. 교신 끝. And that's how I soloed Mirror Dungeon 4 Hard with LCCB Rodeon. A very egocentric solo, but ultimately that's what you have to do when the identity is so frail it can't even survive two fatal attacks. I'm dreading the day I have to do the LCB Sinclair solo. Hopefully by that time he'll have a WA ego or something to help out. Anyways, that's it from me. Like and subscribe to not miss next time where we'll be using this mysterious individual. Goodbye.